Hi, my name is Connie Inukai, and I'm a grandmapreneur, and I'm a relatively new business. And what I want to do is uh, I don't have a business coach. So I thought I would uh, look up different business coaches and interview them because this will not only help me, but it will help other people who are looking for a business coach. And there are many kinds of business coaches. So it's so nice to meet you, Scott. Scott Harley and Christian, you know, you say it for me, Christian. Hinojosa. Hinojosa? Yep. Where's that from? It's uh, Mexican. Okay, well, hola. Buenos dias, okay? So, um, okay, so the first thing that I want to do is uh, ask you a few questions. There are many kinds of business coaches, and I want to know what what kind of business coach are you? I'll talk so, primarily to Scott and Christian. You can chime in when you want to, okay? Awesome. Well, thanks, Connie. It's really a privilege to uh, to be here with you today. So, um, yeah, there are a lot of different business coaches out there. Um, and I typically specialize in marketing and business strategy. So helping uh, clients figure out, um, you know, what is the best way to get their product or service to the market, to the people that really need that product or service. That's wonderful. I need that service. Okay. Um, so, uh, so what, what exactly do you do when you, when you have a client? Yeah. So we typically work with them and, and Christian and I really work closely together um, to really create a, a perfect system for clients in their marketing. And one of the first places that people really need to begin is understanding who their target market really is. Um, and you have to really get to know that target market. You have to really almost kind of get inside their head. What are their pain points? What are the problems that they're experiencing? And then you're going to work through a process of figuring out, okay, they've got this pain, they've got this problem. How is my product or service the solution? And how can I position it so that they're convinced that, hey, this is the solution that I need to adopt and it's going to solve my problems and really give me a, a transformation as opposed to what my life or business is like right now. Well, that's great. So so I'm going to um, be a little specific to my case right now. Okay, I'm an inventor. Um, I actually retired from being a teacher at age 68. And I retired because I had so many things I wanted to do. And the first thing that I did was I, uh, I got older and I couldn't read the menu or the bill in restaurants. First of all, the print was too small. And second of all, the, uh, the restaurants were too dark. So my friends and I would pass around reading glasses. Okay. So I invented this product and it's called Tip and Split. And what it is, it, it has a magnifier. Uh, so you can read the small print and then it has a light on the back in case uh, the restaurant's too dark. And then you can actually figure out the bill, uh, the tip and split the bill in three seconds. So that was my product, okay? So uh, I had a lot of success with it and I actually got on QVC, the Today Show, The View, NBC News, a bunch of uh, outlets. Awesome. And I kind of did this by myself. I have never worked with anybody, okay? Awesome. Um, so, so that's going to change now. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, and then I have another product, which I'm really focusing on right now. And um, during the pandemic, um, because of my age, I really didn't want to go out. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, restaurants were closed, <laughs> but I, I stayed inside for like over a year, just uh -huh. little trips. Okay. So what I decided to do is something productive. And I um, gathered, um, oh, actually, the reason I decided to do this was because uh, when Kobe Bryant died, I was very, um, you know, affected by that. And I thought, you know, he, he had young children, and um, they are all going to know about him because of his great social presence. But who's going to know about me after I'm gone? So I decided that I have to tell them about me and what I want them to know about me. So I gathered up all of my pictures from photo albums, 
Now today, people don't really have photo albums, but in those days we did. So I went through 17 photo albums and a bunch of shoe boxes filled with pictures. And I put them together and I assembled them and I put them into a, I made a book so mm -hmm. I can leave it to my children, my six grandchildren and future generations because they're not gonna know about me unless I tell them. So right. uh, this, is, this is my book. And I want to tell them that grandma used to be a kid once. <laughs> so I have lots of pictures in here about me growing up and about my parents. And, um, you know, so, so many pictures. Um, this is actually one, one picture. Um, this is uh, me. I have four brothers. This is me, my sister, and one of my brothers. And I said, notice that car? It's a Plymouth. Hmm. I was born in that car. My parents couldn't quite make it to the hospital. So I think that these are very interesting things to share with my children, my grandchildren, because mm -hmm. it's, you know, so, so my whole book is filled with pictures and captions because it's very easy to read and uh, it's easy to write. So it's mostly pictures and I came up with interesting captions for everything. So I'm giving them a history of my life and uh, so they can know about me, okay? Yeah. So um, I think that everybody has a story to tell and some people just need a little impetus to get started on their story, to write it down. Yeah. So I developed a course that I can teach them how to write their story in six weeks. So it's a video course and actually I, I'm just writing an ebook to go with it. So I'm telling you a little bit, bit about me, Scott and Christian. So what would you advise me about marketing? Yeah, Christian, you want to hop in there real quick? I know you've got some good ideas. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think that what you're doing already is perfect because you have such a clear picture of who you want to help um, and, and of your target audience. And so, you know, you're able to speak to them with such confidence and such passion. Um, I think honestly, the only thing is the, basically the strategy of, you know, how do you get this out there and how do you get it in front of them? Exactly. Um, and I, I think the key as well is how do you make it as clear as possible for them? Not only here's this book that you can make, but you know, how does it, how does it benefit you and how is it going to change the lives of, you know, of your kids or of your grandkids and being able to clearly communicate, you know, the process is simple. It's super easy. And your kids and your grandkids are going to love you for it. And I think this will be huge if you can just get it in front of them. Right. So my target market is, uh, I, I always thought my, my target market was people my age. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, because everybody wants to, to uh, write their story, especially people who are sick. Perhaps yeah. somebody has cancer and they've got like, you know, one year to, to live. Now, I think that they, they especially would want to be remembered while they can still write their story. But, and there are lots of people in nursing homes uh, who, who just want to do this. They all want to tell their story. So I'm thinking what I should do is work with their children, mm -hmm. you know, 40-year-olds, 40 and 50-year-olds. Go bond with your grandparents or your parents and uh, write their story, give them the gift that they will always uh, be thankful for. And, you know, because they don't want to die without nobody remembering them. So it's up to us to make sure that we are remembered. So how do, so, so that's my, that's my target market. I think because um, I, I have, I started an Instagram account, but people my age don't go on Instagram. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know how to do it until I was talking to my neighbor's teenage children who told me about Instagram. Uh -huh. I had no idea how to do it. So I know that my those people are not going to 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 know anything about it. So I think that I have to reach their children. Mm -hmm. So um, but I don't know how to market it. Yeah. So, you know, reaching their children, I think, is a great uh, idea there because they're going to be the ones that are going to be able to, you know, handle all the technology. So, you know, putting a book together, you know, gathering all the pictures and everything, um, you know, in 
you know, formatting that into a book and, you know, whether it's uploading it or getting it to a publisher and things, um, you know, typically, you know, people that are in my generation, you know, are going to be a little bit more comfortable with technology. Right. And so they're going to be able to uh, to do that. So targeting, you know, like people that are in my age group who have parents or grandparents who, um, you know, probably have dozens or hundreds of pictures, you know, like you mentioned in, in shoe boxes, or um, I think, you know, Christian uh, found a bunch of slides, you know, at his grandparents' house. Um, that, you know, being able to, to take those and then to open up a conversation, uh, you know, with the, the parents or grandparents and, and kind of build this story over some time, um, I, I think is really a great idea. Now to get in front of, of them, obviously there's a million different ways that you can do that. Um, you know, social media can be a great platform for reaching that age group. You know, they're, they're typically going to be on Facebook. Uh, they may be on Instagram as well. Um, so you would need to create some really compelling posts or maybe some paid social media ads um, that has some really convincing copy. You know, why should you create this book? What is the benefit? What's the transformation going to be as a result of them sitting down with their parent or grandparent and, you know, documenting this history, right? And so that would be one way to do it. Another uh, way to potentially, uh, you know, to do this as well would be to. Uh, you I want to. I want to. I want to pause for one second, Scott. Sure. If, if I were to hire you, would you help me with those with those uh, say Facebook ads um, to uh, to attract uh, clients? So doing social media advertising is not exactly my specialty because it requires, especially the paid advertising, you really need an expert that's in that particular industry so that you're not throwing away money. Now, when it comes to the strategy of, you know, different media to get your message out or different ways to get your message out, that's where my strength is. But it, I'm not the one to manage your Facebook ads, um, but we do have connections with some other uh, specialists that focus only on doing that social media. I see. So I would need to have um, uh, a strategy coach, coach and mm -hmm. also somebody to manage my, uh, my ads. Right. Yeah, unless you're comfortable in, in managing your own ads, but again, there's a lot of nuances that are uh, you know involved in that. That I really recommend having somebody who does it every single day, so that, mm -hmm. that way you're not wasting money on reaching people that aren't you know in your target market. But that, I've I've already tried that. <laughs> okay, yeah. and I really was not successful at it, which is yeah. why I want to. Uh, um, hire uh, a coach for me, yeah. and probably more than one coach, as you're saying. Yeah, I mean, you know, we all need a team of people really around us. Um, and so, you know, kind of think about, you know, like business owners, for example. Um, business owners need to have a team of people that specialize in different areas. So, you know, we have a lawyer who, you know, can handle all of our legal questions and legal issues that may come up, but our lawyer doesn't know tax code. Right. So we have to have an accountant because they specialize in doing our taxes for us and, and helping us leverage our finances in the best way possible. And then you may have a business coach that, you know, is helping you with marketing strategy. Christian is more of a copywriter and a web designer. Um, you know, that's where his specialty comes in. So you have to have a, a a team of people that support you because it's very difficult and frankly impossible for one person to be able to be a specialist in all of those areas. Exactly. And I was trying to do that. And I couldn't, <laughs> right? I, I just couldn't do it and become successful. Yeah. So I was fairly successful with my invention tip and split. Mm -hmm. But for write your selfie, I have so much passion for this that yeah. I want that I decided this is a very uh good time for me to yeah. uh to have a team because I don't have a team. Yep. Absolutely. So let me throw in one idea here, and this may sound like really, really crazy, um, but I think it's going to reach really kind of both of your target markets for your book. So it's going to reach, you know, some of the adult children of, you know, more elderly people, but it could also reach some of the elderly people as well and at least start a conversation. But AARP here in the United States is the American Association for Retired Persons. I don't know how many thousands of members that they have. 
but they're constantly recruiting. I mean, I'm not even in their age group, but I still get the mail from them, uh, you know, inviting me to sign up. But, you know, they send out a regular monthly magazine. And of course, they have incentives for people to sign up as well. You know, it's like when you join, you're going to get this free gift and everything. You know, being able to get in that magazine, for example, that they send out, having an advertisement in there, or maybe that they do a feature article on the Write Your Selfie. So they interview you. And now you're positioned as an expert and it's going to be seen by thousands of people. And this gives you an opportunity to get your message out right to that target market, probably at a very minimal expense and probably better than what you can actually do on social media. Well, um, I will tell you that I have tried numerous times to connect with AARP. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, two years ago, I went to a trade show and they had a booth there. And there were three people at the booth and I showed them uh, my tip and split. And they said, this is amazing. We have to have this on our site as a free gift for people who sign up. And the woman even said, call me. Here's my personal, here's my number. Mm-hmm. I called her five times. I emailed her five times. She never responded. Yep. So um, I, you know, I have tried because every, the three people at that booth all said, oh my God, this is incredible because AARP usually gives out like a bag, you know, mm-hmm. to carry to the gym. And yep. uh, wouldn't they love this one? You know, I even would negotiate for a really low price. So yeah. I make like 10 cents a piece. That's fine. But uh, <laughs> right. I haven't had any luck because I'm yep. working alone. Sure. And, and, you know, and, you know, so phone calls and emails, you know, are, are great. Um, however, we're all inundated. And you can imagine the AARP is probably getting pitched by, you know, hundreds of people, you know, every year. Here's our product. Here's what we would love to get in front of your audience. And so they're just kind of like getting overwhelmed. And, you know, frankly, you know, they, they may have forgotten their conversation with you as soon okay. as they left that trade show. So I would encourage showing up in a unique way. And so a shock and all box, okay? You get you a a large FedEx box. You put your tip and split in it. Maybe you put a a smaller version of your selfie book. um, And then you write a personal letter. Maybe you record a video and put it on a DVD and throw in some fun stuff. You know, I don't know what your favorite candy or favorite snack is, um, but if it's something that, you know, is not going to perish over the course of two or three days, Throw that into the box and make it a fun box and ship it by, you know, UPS or FedEx so that it, you know, stands out. Because when they get that package, there's going to be a stack of mail on their desk and then there's going to be this big box. What do you think they're going to open first? They're going to open the package, right? And now they're going to be like, well, who sent me this? Oh, Con- Connie sent the, what, what is all that? They're going to look into this and it's going to create like this awe. And they're going to be like, wow, this is like really, really cool. And you get somebody like Christian to write you a very compelling sales letter to them. They're going to, they're going to reach out. They're going to, you know, at least send you an email. Um, but most likely they're probably going to get on a phone call with you and that's going to get your foot in the door. And if you want to take it a step further, don't just send the box to one person reach out to three or four people at AARP, all the way up to the CEO, president, down to, you know, the marketing director, down to the the advertiser for the magazine. If you send it to, you know, multiple key people within the organization, they're going to have a buzz about this. Hey, did you, did you get a, I got a package today. I did too. I did too. You know, they're going to talk about this and now it's going to create some excitement within the organization and that gives you a better chance. And I can almost guarantee you Nobody else is showing up in that way to really be compelling and convincing. You are brilliant. Okay. So, so that, that is actually incredible. And I'm glad I'm recording this so I can keep reminding myself of it. This, this is absolutely incredible. Okay. And I'm sure this is going to help other people get (laughs) ideas, except that uh, all AARP might get uh, uh, a hundred FedEx boxes, <laughs> so I have to be the first one to get there. That's so, right. um, so, so you are absolutely wonderful. So um, let me ask you a few more questions because uh, my goal is not only to help me, but it's to help other people. 
Sure. So um, is there some kind of client you like to work with and some kind of client you don't like to work with? Two parts. Sure. Christian, yeah. I'll let you go first. Yeah. So um, I, uh, I, my niche is it probably falls within small business, but that's a pretty broad range. But I've found that the kind of, it comes down to the kind of person that I love working with. And I, and I believe that Scott's the same because he and I have shared a lot of clients which is anyone, honestly, someone like you, Connie, that just believed that has something unique that they do, a product or a service, something that they develop that they believe in and that they're passionate about. And honestly, if anyone just has a passion to, you know, to create something and to see it through and they have a desire to, you know, serve their world with, you know, awesome products or services, whatever it is, and they want to, you know, make an impact in some way, um, you know, it's so easy to just, come behind them or come alongside them and help them on their way. Um, but, you know, the hardest person to work with is someone who, who doesn't have that drive. You know, they, they, their work is just, just their work, which is fine, but it's hard whenever, you know, your job is to help them grow and they're not, they, they don't have a solid, you know, drive behind what they do. They don't have, you know, a, a deep, you know, internal reason for doing what they do. And so it's hard to tap into that to really, you know, to get the growth. But if someone really cares about what they do, I mean, the sky's the limit. And they're fun and they're easy to work with. Well, you know, um, thank you. So so my thing is um, I'm trying to reach an audience that is overlooked, a market that's overlooked. I'm 73 years old, but I'm not dead. <laughs> and so, so a lot of people discount us and say, why should we target that audience? But mm -hmm. as you can see, I still have a lot of life in me. Yeah. And so, um, so I'm trying to reach out to people who most people ignore. Okay. Right. So my first product is for people who can't read the small print in a restaurant. Now you guys don't have that problem, but if you go out to dinner with your parents or your grandparents, you know that problem. Hey, I, I'm getting there. I, I'm already at bifocal, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, it usually starts at about 50, and then it declines, <laughs> and actually my vision got even worse during COVID, <laughs> you yeah. know, because I was like on Zooms all the time. Yeah. So, um, can I, can yeah. I add in here on a little bit building on what Christian said, you know, the clients that, that we like to work with, um, I, I kind of like, there's a lot of different characteristics, but there's two that are really important to me. One is that they are open-minded. So, you know, obviously, you know, driven to grow their business, but the, also that they're open-minded. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about social media marketing, and that's the craze today. But that's not always the most effective media. There are other forms of getting your message out there. And so having somebody who's willing to test and try new things, even though it may put them outside of their comfort zone, if they're open-minded, it makes it a lot easier to really um, help them implement and see like, hey, this may work, or let's look at this industry, see what's working for them, and how can we adapt it to what you're doing? So that open-mindedness is very important. The second one uh, comes from uh, something that I learned from Tony Robbins is resourcefulness. Resourcefulness. Now, you know, I hear it a lot that, you know, everybody's on a, a limited income, you know, or a fixed income, for example, you know, and even as small business owners, technically we are on a, a fixed income as well. Although as entrepreneurs, we do have the ability to create additional income. So resourcefulness, you know, it's going to require funding to hire several coaches that specialize in different areas. It's gonna require funding to be able to hire a copywriter to write you know, a good sales letter. It's gonna require money to do uh, you know, different types of marketing because if you use direct mail, that's gonna be a little bit more expensive than doing social media marketing, but your return on investment can be a lot higher. So a lot of business owners, when they first hear ideas of like, okay, let's try this idea. And then they look at the cost of it. It's like, oh man, I don't have that in my budget. Or that sounds really expensive. Somebody who's resourceful. And instead of saying, oh, I can't do that because I don't have the money, but they flip the question. How can I get the money to do that? 
And then that starts the, the subconscious of really working like, I've got this problem. How am I going to solve this? Again, it goes back to that drive and that passion that they have for their business. And it comes through in the open-mindedness and the resourcefulness. If we have that in a client, which we have several clients that we're working with right now that are like that, those are so much fun to work with because we're thinking outside the box. We're outside of our comfort zone. We're, we're pioneers kind of in a, in a new area. And it's so much fun being able to go down that journey, you know, with those type of clients. Well, you sound wonderful. And uh, I, I'm really excited to meet you. Uh, now, one of my, my worries is that uh, I've tried working with people uh, for example, when I had my my uh, my invention, I hired publicists mm -hmm. to uh, to get me known. I paid a lot of money, and they did yep. absolutely nothing. So mm -hmm. a lot of new business owners uh, uh, maybe haven't confront haven't uh, uh, approached that yet. But I right. certainly have. I hired two publicists, and I got all my publicity by myself. But I they they didn't take my money. So, uh, so we're, we're very hesitant to do it, you know, yeah. um, so, uh, so this is very, very uh, enlightening for me, because uh, you, you come across as real people. And uh, I'm sure this is going to help so many people besides me, uh, learn like, who to trust, you know, so um, uh yeah, so so this is what what I'm doing uh, right now is I'm interviewing you guys not just for me but for other people who might be looking for somebody mm -hmm. like you. So, do you have any other words to say uh, to future clients of yours? If I can just say, I wanted to add um, to what you just said that you know if someone has that hesitancy um, about you know finding a coach. I have had clients who've been burned in the past, and I, I would say that the thing to look out for is to look for someone who's going to listen to you and avoid someone who has one method or one one way that they do things, um, and they're, they're intent on kind of on pulling you into that. Now, sometimes it's good, but I've seen clients get hurt too by saying, you know, the client says, you know, I, I want to do this, and, and the coach just doesn't listen. And there's one thing about a coach that listens and then gently guides you into the right way to do things. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that have, you know, one product that they sell as a service for a lot of money. And coaching isn't a one size fits all, you know, kind of thing. It's a relationship. And yep. so, you know, you don't want a coach that says, um, you know, I'm up here, I've made it and I'm going to pull you up here too. And here's how I'm going to do it. You want a coach that's going to say, I'm going to come along behind you, beside you, and I'm going to help you get what you need to succeed. And I think that you can tell that kind of attitude whenever you meet someone and whenever you talk to them. Um, but that's what you want to look for because there are people out there that are just going to take your money and may not get you results. Um, but if you find someone that listens to you, then that's going to be someone that gets you results. Uh, well, you, you're wonderful, okay? You guys are really wonderful. And uh, I've learned a lot from this uh, interview, and I'm, I can't wait to, uh, to broadcast it so other people can learn about your, uh, what you do and how you can help small businesses. Awesome. Well, we appreciate the opportunity and to talk to you and kind of share some of our insights and knowledge. Thank you very much.